Hey everybody, it's William Padilla Brown here, and I'm coming at you with the second video update from the FICO Permaculture series. And we're here looking at the photobioreactors in my basement, uh, this is the home setup here in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. I figured I'd kick off this video by letting you all know what FICO Permaculture is. In short, uh, it'd be a multidisciplinary branch of permaculture uh, focusing on utilizing microalgae, algae, and cyanobacteria uh, in whole systems design. Um, so phyco, uh, from Greek phycos, meaning uh, seaweed or algae, uh, and permaculture being a multidisciplinary design science where the user, the user utilizes uh, biomimicry or uh, natural patterns and natural systems to recreate human systems that have the same resiliency and ability to fluctuate with change, uh, whereas the systems that we utilize uh, harm our natural systems and tend to crash when things change. Uh, so I'll be studying these organisms and uh, utilizing their myriad of applications in uh, some of my design uh, designs that I'll be doing. Um, so I'll go over uh, what you're looking at here, the photobioreactor setup. Um, so we have an uh, enclosure uh, that contains a media uh, that is a liquid uh, that contains the nutrients that are uh, necessary to grow uh, these organisms. They're um, the precursors of plants. The first, the first photosynthesizing organisms were actually the cyanobacteria, the bacteria that uh, developed the trait of photosynthesis to be able to uh, utilize the radiation the, of the electromagnetic light spectrum uh, to create energy. Um, so first were the cyanobacteria and then the algae evolved. Um, and then uh, through phylogeny, we know that all plants evolved from microalgae. Uh, so this is the basis of all organic life on our planet. Um, fungi and algae take it all the way back. Um, so our media uh, consists of uh, distilled water. Uh, we're using this orchid grow as our inorganic uh, nutrient source. Um, you can use organic nutrient sources, which we'll be working on with biodigesters this year. Um, but it pretty much contains everything necessary. Uh, to grow plants in algae. Um, so most of these are going to be derived from salts, um, which originally is what the algae and cyanobacteria were breaking down um, as the early waters of the earth were filled with inorganic compounds, uh, minerals, um, and different elements in their raw forms. Um, cyanobacteria started photosynthesizing and respirating, uh, br uh, taking down ca uh, carbon dioxide and creating uh, oxygen, which most uh, most of the oxygen at the beginning was utilized in oxidizing uh, different metals and things like this, and it took billions and billions of years before there was actually a fluctuation in uh, atmospheric oxygen uh, to where the uh, land could be inhabitable and the uh, atmosphere could be inhabitable by biological life. Um, so here, uh, or higher biological life, I'm sorry. Um, and here we have the uh, ionic sulfate mineral. So this is something that we're also adding into the media to add a uh, full spectrum of minerals. There's over 100 trace minerals in here. This is derived from black mica. Uh, I like to also use ionic minerals or minerals derived from uh, seawater uh, just because anybody can create those. Um, so we have our algae in these glass containers. Um, you want to use containers that aren't going to leach toxic uh, chemicals or off gas into your uh, media. Um, we have it here on a seed, uh, seedling heat mat, which keeps this at 75 degrees. Um, if your room stays around room temperature, you're not going to need a heat source, but this is in my basement and it is winter, uh, so my basement averages around 50 degrees, so this is able to raise it up to 75 degrees. Um, we have aquarium pumps. Uh, for the spirulina, you're not going to need these uh, inline air filters, um, and you're not going to need these once the cultures are uh, expanded into larger states. Uh, but this is to maintain sterility to make sure that I don't get any anything else growing in my culture medias. Uh, but the spirulina grows at such a high pH uh, that you're not going to get any competitor algae or weed algae or uh, other bacteria growing in there. Uh, so we have this uh, standard uh, aquarium pump. This one's pretty old. Um, I have polyfill in between the connections uh, to act as a semi-filter. Um, and then we just have a rigid air line that goes all the way down to the corner creating a uh, flow of the water uh, so that we don't get algae buildup. Um, but I do come around and swish it around every now and then to make sure that there's nothing building up at the bottoms. Um, you'll notice uh, some of these have a phrase on the bottom that says Kadoish, that means uh, holy. 
Um, for those of you that have seen the work of Dr. Emoto, um, he studied water and he studied the effects of intention on water and uh, did some very brilliant work in uh, realizing that the intention that we put into the water has a very uh, critical effect on its properties. So I like to put something uh, nice, uh, sometimes I'll put a nice little symbol on there or uh, a cool word, maybe love or something like that to um, increase the vibration or uh, put positive energy into the water. Um, so there's that. Uh, we have the uh, T5 array. I'm going to be putting a UV bulb in there. Uh, UV, the UV radiation will cause uh, them to produce more lipids, more oils to protect themselves from the radiation, which is important uh, when working with the chlorella, which I'll uh, tell you a little bit about more after I get to that. Um, so the spirulina uh, we're producing here, uh, this is the Arthrospira plantensis. Uh, this is what I will be developing the educational material on uh, for it is one of the easiest to cultivate um, and it will be filling a niche market. Um, so I'll be educating uh, people through the backyard permaculture immersions at Seppi's Place. If you would like to find out more information about that, you can go to www.seppisplace.com. Um, but I'll be developing a curriculum uh, to be able to educate people how to cultivate spirulina, uh, to be able to take to market. Um, as I said, it's a niche market. There aren't many people in the United States producing spirulina dry or fresh for local markets. So uh, the local scale spirulina is just a completely, uh, pretty much untapped niche market in North America right now. Um, so. Uh, we'll be developing different models for people to be able to apply these in their homes and then small scales uh, for uh, small scale spirulina micro farms. Um, a lot of the research that I've been studying uh, is through the antenna programs and the programs offered by Earthrise Farms uh, out in California. So that's really cool uh, research that I've been studying. Hopefully I can get out to some uh, actual hands-on uh, courses to be able to better develop more curriculum uh, and more material to, de uh, to develop more courses. Uh, on a permaculture-based platform to be teaching about microalgae uh, production. Um, so the spirulina is one of the best food sources in the planet. Uh, it's the highest protein food source on the planet. It can be between 50 and 70 percent protein, uh, depending on what kind of nutrient uh, mixes you're growing it in. Uh, it contains a full spectrum of vitamins and minerals, uh, pretty much everything essential for human life. There's some people that say that you can live on this alone. Um, spirulina also has a really interesting pigment, a blue pigment, um, that's why uh, they call it the blue-green algae, even though it's a cyanobacteria. Um, the blue pigment, uh, blue pigments are very rare in nature, um, but this blue pigment uh, can actually aid and uh, encourage stem cell growth. Um, so that's really, really cool. Um, but another really interesting thing that it can do is it can uh, serve the function that bilirubin serves in the body. Bilirubin is a pigment our body produces uh, to regulate organ function, to ba basically keep our, our organs in a homeostatic function. So this blue pigment can serve that same function. Uh, the bilirubin is actually produced in bile, so it's interesting that we can uh, utilize a pigment from this fresh source uh, to serve that same function in our body. Um, so the chlorella I'll also be utilizing as a food source. The chlorella can be between 40 and 50 percent protein, uh, same depending on uh, the nutrient that you grow it in. Um, you'll see there's things floating around in here. Um, and here it's just a uh, build up, build up of the uh, spirulina. If you saw the first video, there was just a little ball of spirulina, so it's a little bit broken up and the cells are starting to split. Um, and here, uh, these are little pieces of agar from the peptone agar that I received the chlorella in. Um, so once this expands through this liquid culture, I'll be letting this agar fall to the bottom so I can spread out the uh, algae cells without spreading over the agar and have a cleaner looking culture. Um, so yeah, the chlorella I'll be utilizing as a food source. As I said, it could be between 40 to 50 percent protein. So these are whole food sources right here. These are things that you can eat alone, stand alone. Vegetarians and vegans should definitely have algae and microalgae in their diets. Um, so this produces uh, antioxidants as well. This is a very, uh, very useful organism in detoxification of heavy metals from the body. It can aid in chelation processes, basically bonding with the heavy metals and allowing them to uh, safely pro uh, pass through your body. Um, it also has some interesting compounds, uh, which people know as the chlorella growth factor, which is a uh, cocktail of nucleotides and peptides. Uh, basically, uh, compounds like uh, amino acids and things that are essential for protein synthesis, uh, more notably uh, synthesizing DNA. So these are things that can help you produce DNA and protect your DNA. Um, so really, really awesome stuff here. Uh, the antioxidants in the chlorella uh, will bind with free radicals. Uh, without creating more free radicals. So really, really awesome thing. 
and helping to prevent oxidization of the body. Um, and also with increased lipid production with the UV light, uh, we will be testing out some different extraction methods and utilizing uh, this algae for biofuel production. So we can extract fuels from this, or oil from this, and convert it uh, to be uh, biodiesel that can be burned in engines and utilized for electricity. And lastly, we have the Haematococcus pluvalis. Uh, the Haematococcus pluvalis uh, is doing the best so far. You can see this water is a little bit more green. Um, and the Haematococcus pluvalis will be utilizing for astaxanthin production. So basically, we'll be growing this out till it's green, and then we're going to piss it off. We're going to make it real stressed out so that it produces a powerful antioxidant. So it'll turn from green to red, uh, and it'll be producing this antioxidant known as astaxanthin, which is a ketocarotenoid, a red pigment. Uh, that is one of the most powerful isolated antioxidants on the planet. So we'll be utilizing this and also in detoxification of the body. Another interesting fact about chlorella, uh, studies from the Journal of Food and, uh, Medicinal Food shows that it can uh, detoxify dioxin from the bodies of pregnant women and breastfeeding women. So that's very important. Uh, so we're utilizing these to clean our bodies with the environment that we have today with all these environmental pollutants and toxins, pesticides, things like this, and also produce high amounts of protein and medicinal compounds, antioxidant compounds, and lipids, and things like this. So energy production, food production, and also uh, once we study a little bit more about the biodigestion, uh, we, can we will be able to utilize these in systems to process our own wastewater. Uh, so really interesting stuff. Uh, a lot of research to be done, a lot of work to be done here in incorporating all these algae and microalgae cyanobacteria into permaculture designs. If you like this work, hit the thumbs up, share on Facebook and Twitter. Um, different permaculture blogs, uh, phycology blogs. Um, if you'd like to support my research and help me uh, continue my education, uh, please shoot me an email at apexgrower uh, dot, at gmail.com. Um, and I'll be doing more video updates. I'll do um, video updates specifically on each of these species. Um, and then I'll do more uh, in-depth updates on how to maintain them. Um, and stay tuned for the educational material we'll be releasing. And hopefully I'll do some specific algae, um, microalgae workshops, presentations, and I'll definitely be doing some specific uh, spirulina workshops. Uh, so yeah, this has been William Padilla Brown, and this is the Phyco Permaculture Series.